Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and today I'm going to be talking about Lei Rulong. Now, Lei makes his first appearance in Tekken 2, where he's part of Hong Kong's police force and is referred to as a super cop because he's just that damn good at his job. He's always had a very strong sense of justice and is very proficient in hand to hand combat. Having mastered the five animal forms as well as the drunken boxing fighting style, Lei is more than capable of handling himself in hand to hand combat. He then began tracking down a series of murders in Hong Kong, and all of these would lead lead him to Kazuya Mishima, as he was currently head of Mishima Saibatsu. However, without any solid information, Lei wouldn't be able to bring him in. Now, Lei was in fact involved in an aeroplane crash, where he would suffer amnesia, but it hadn't hurt him enough that he didn't know about Kazuya. So despite having a very vague memory of the man, he would begin tracking him down again by hunting down one of his affiliates, Bruce. Now, during the end of Tekken 2, Lei was able to track down Bruce and defeat the man, but was unable to retrieve any information from him, as he was able to get away via a plane. Now as Lee was about to catch up to him, this plane apparently crashed, killing all passengers aboard. But Lei believed that this wasn't just an accident, it must have been planned, as he believed that Kazuya would have wanted to silence Bruce so he could have a clean slate. Now Lee would investigate into this and learned that the accident was in fact staged, so Bruce was still roaming around. But Lei didn't have any leads and as such dropped the case, returning back to Hong Kong. Now 19 years would pass and Lei was still given the title of Super Cop, despite being at at the age of 45, Lee was still fantastic at his job, having brought down some of the most powerful crime syndicates within Hong Kong. Now, Lei would began following a lead where a lot of well-known martial artists were seemingly disappearing, and during these investigations, he'd be approached by Heihachi Mishima, who would invite Lei to participate in the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 3. Believing that this was fate, Lei would enter the tournament, but wouldn't go too far as he was eliminated. Now, in Tekken 4, Lei had become a workaholic, investing all of his time into his police work, and this would in fact lead to the separation between himself and his girlfriend, because due to being a workaholic, he was unable to invest any time into their relationship, sending Lei into a very deep depression, but he couldn't keep a good man down, and Lei would invest all of his free time into his work, but things weren't going down too well there either, as he failed to capture an agent of a syndicate that would have enabled the Hong Kong police to take down his boss. This had meant that two years worth of intensive investigation had gone down the toilet, and what didn't help is that rival detectives were attempting to sabotage his career by saying that he allowed personal affairs to affect his job performance, and because of this, Lei would in fact be put on a one month suspension from active duty. But again, this wouldn't stop him, as he had heard that the syndicate was plotting to have a boxer, Steve Fox, assassinated, so he would enter the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 4 to keep an eye on Steve Fox as he was also participating in it. Now during the tournament, Lei was able to track down the assassin and save Steve's life, but wasn't able to take her into custody. However, he'd gotten enough evidence from her that he was able to have the crime syndicate taken down. Now, during the events of Tekken 5, Lei began tracking down a series of attacks stringing all the way from China to Japan. Now, all of these attacks were of masters at well-known dojo, so the assailant was clearly very well-versed in martial arts. Lei would reach out to his friend, who was also involved in one of these incidents, and get some more information about this individual. He learned that the man's name was Feng Wei, and that he was a very powerful martial artist. But before Lei could actually track him down, his trail went cold, and he just disappeared off the radar, at least until the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 5 was announced. Knowing that Feng would want to fight extremely powerful fighters, he would enter with the hopes of tracking him down and taking him into custody. But unfortunately, he was unable to find him, and when Lei had returned back home to Hong Kong, Jin had just started a massive world war, sending Hong Kong into chaos. Knowing that the Mishima Zaibotsu was responsible for this, Lei would enter the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 6 to take out Jin and have him answer for his crimes against humanity. Now, during the scenario campaign, we learned that Lei doesn't just want to take down Jin, but also his father, Kazuya. Unfortunately, he's outmanned and outgunned until he meets Lars and Alyssa. He then leaves it to these two individuals to take down Jin and Kazuya. And this is the last time we actually see Lei in the Tekken canon. He's yet to appear in Tekken 7, but is highly demanded by many fans. So the likelihood of him slipping into the game as DLC is extremely high, as he is a fan beloved character and has appeared in every Tekken game from Tekken 2 onward. Now here's a little fun fact about Lei, if you haven't noticed, he's heavily based off Jackie Chan and his role within the Police Story movies, where Chan is also referred to as Super Cop. But anyway guys, this does wrap it up for the Lei Wulong video. I hope you've all enjoyed this and it has taught you a little bit more about the character. Now I've never been a massive fan of Lei Wulong myself, he's always been a character to me that's just kind of been there, but after making this video, it has opened my eyes a bit more about the character. 
So who knows, I might go back and play him a bit in tag 2, or wait for him to drop in Tekken 7 as DLC, if that does so happen. Now next week, I'd like to let you all know that I will be covering Devil Kazuya to wrap up my end of the Mishima saga, so please do stick around for that as it's going to be a very interesting video. Now before this video wraps up guys, if possible let's try getting this video to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel as YouTube's algorithm is pretty much broken at this point, so by just giving it a thumbs up it helps out a ton. Now as always guys, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.